The fact that you really could be a monkey's uncle is a weird science effect that boggles my mind. Not really, I just couldn't come up with a better opening than that. It's pretty common knowledge that humans share 98.8% of our DNA with chimps. The fact that makes people who think a magic sky daddy made us out of clay or a rib uh, very upset. Ironically, it's those exact same people that allow the rest of us to see how true it is that we are that closely related to monkeys. I mean, if we're being honest, some of them don't even seem like they got the full 1.2% variation. After all, a lot of them did vote for an orangutan in the last election, so... Yeah. Anyway, all of that genetic variation has taken place over the past five to six million years when humans split off from chimps. And around 50 to 60,000 years ago, a group of 50 to 100,000 humans left Africa and every non-African human alive on the planet today descended from them. So it's crazy to think that a 1.2% genetic difference is all that separates us from chimps after five to six million years and dispersing our population around the globe. But 1.2% starts to seem pretty massive when you put it in the context of the fact that all 8 billion people around the world are 99.9% .9 genetically similar. A difference of 0.01% separates you from the person who is most genetically different from you on this planet. But I feel like a lot of this is common knowledge and that's not what's crazy. I mean, it's easy to see that we have a lot of similarities with chimps. We, we have similar body shapes, the same number of fingers. Our immune systems are almost identical. It's easy to see how we came from that. And as crazy as our similarities are to chimps, it's even crazier that a 0.01 genetic difference makes all of us so different. I mean, different skin tones, different hair colors, different eye colors, different heights, different weights, different sizes. All of that immense and beautiful diversity that is the human race boils down to to a tiny fraction of a percent of difference in our genetic makeup. So now if humans can look and behave that differently with just 0.01% genetic variation, chimps who all look and behave in similar fashions and live in a relatively confined geographic space must have a barely noticeable genetic difference between them, right? Well, surprise, turns out in the primate family, humans are the ones from Alabama or Florida because they actually have the highest rates of incest in the country because you know, it's, it's fucking Florida, but you get my point. So it turns out that chimps and there's four subspecies of them in the African continent have way more genetic diversity than we thought. Western and central chimps, which live in the same basic area, mostly just separated by the Congo River, have, from what I could tell, like two and a half times more genetic diversity between them than the entire population of humans around the world. Which is just crazy, because for one, they all look the same to me, which, is that chimpist? Apist? I don't know. I'm sorry if it is. But also because they're quite literally neighbors. They're separated by a river where humans are separated by oceans and continents and hemispheres. And their population is a fraction of our, like a, a micro fraction of ours. There's less than 300,000 chimps left living in the wild. They are endangered, by the way, because, you know, we suck as usual. So the fact that they can exhibit magnitudes more genetic diversity than we do it is just mind boggling. So this would suggest that chimp populations have been really stable over these millions of years. They haven't had population populations die off where only a few survive and their genetics get passed along. It would also suggest that our populations were a lot less stable and we probably came a lot closer to extinction a lot more times than they did. It also shows us that the chances of a chimp crossing a river are about as likely as them going to space and that they will only probably do it if, if we force them to. And that sort of makes sense. Chimps can't swim, so water is a pretty effective barrier, but it is still crazy to think that in all of this time, the Congo hasn't dried up enough that they could walk across or, you know, a tree or two didn't fall across that they crossed on. Just anything and all of that time that would have allowed them to cross that river enough to do some interbreeding and, and intermix their genetics. It also apparently gives scientists a lot of clues and uh, the development of the human race and ancient human history and I don't really understand what those clues are but they said that's a thing so that's cool too. Well, the fact that Dr. King and the Donald who is downright disrespectful to the doctor on his day have damn near identical DNA while Dr. Zira and Dr. Zayas are dramatically different. Well that is pretty mind-boggling.